Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Op6 series. So, so far I've introduced what I'm doing here, which is learning to use the Op6 myself and sharing that experience with you based on a syllabus which I've developed to help me get to grips with this synthesizer. So far we've discussed the synthesizer in general, the basics of the interface. We've listened to all of the favorite presets that come factory set, and we've listened to a single operator, the different waveforms and different sound shaping options available to you. What I wanted to do, rather than diving into FM synthesis right away, was experiment in trying to set up a subtractive synth. So how might we do that? Well, let's go to an init patch. What you might imagine you would do is you would pick an algorithm that is all carriers. So like this one. So what, what's happening here? Well, we have all six operators acting as six oscillators fading into a mixer and then outputting. So why is this not a subtractive synth? Well, the problem is that this synthesizer doesn't actually have an amplifier that's controllable by an envelope at the output of each voice. Instead, each operator has its own envelope. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I wanted to change the envelope shape, which would be the envelope generator controlling the amplitude of the entire signal, I'd have to do it for every single one of these operators. So how do I get around that? Well, I looked in the manual and I came up with a option, which we shall be trying today, called algorithm 36. So what does algorithm 36 provide? It provides four operators set as modulators, all of which modulate both operator one and operator two, which are both carriers. What I'm going to do is use one of the non-FM modes on operator one. In particular, operator one, I'm going to set to filter mode. Why do I want it on filter mode? Well, what filter mode does is it receives the inputs from the modulators. It mixes those into an audio signal and then based on the oscillator mix can cross mix those with an internal oscillator from that operator and it feeds all of that through a low pass or other filter based on this cutoff. So if I press key, it gets louder when I turn it up, quieter when I turn it down. So what does that mean? This is setting the amount of the oscillator that's part of operator one that's included in the mix as opposed to the input. So now I've turned down this oscillator, all I'm hearing is the input that it's receiving from these. So I can turn them up and they all appear in the signal. The other thing to do is to open the cutoff completely because I don't want to be filtering at all. So even though this is a filter, I'm not actually using it to filter. The other thing I need to do is that by default, in a subtractive synth, all the oscillators would be outputting constantly. Since this is not available, I'm going to go into the envelope generator. And what I'm going to do is just turn up the sustain and set the release to be very long. I'm going to do it for all of them. So what this is doing is I'm making sure that the oscillators will be sounding much longer than any envelope shape that I put in operator one. So in other words, the, the envelope shape of operator one is going to be my amplitude envelope like in a subtractive synth, and all of the other operators will effectively be outputting constantly. So let's get some different waveforms going on here. So let's go to mode. So the first one can be sine. Let's go for maybe the 8-bit sine. The next one can be, let's go for the saw. And then the next one can be uh, maybe, in fact, for a sort of consistency, I think I might make this one into the triangle. And then this one can be square. 
and then this one can be saw. So let's check it. Saw, square, triangle, sine. So I put them in that order. So this has the least harmonic content. This has the most harmonic content. So when they're all turned down, it's like all the oscillators have been turned down in the mixer on a subtractive synth. So let's just turn up uh, just the square. So notice the sound of the envelope is very square. Let's have a look now at the envelope of operator one. This is acting as an overall VCA amplitude envelope. Pretty straightforward there. Um, there is also a control for velocity sensitivity for the level of this operator. So I think in a lot of subtractive synths, you can make the amplifier envelope reach a lower level when the velocity is lower and a higher level when it's higher. So let's set this. So I can hear that I actually haven't set the release long enough. So the decay is about one second. Let's set the release to half a second. So you can hear it's getting louder as I press harder. So already we have something where we can now mix these different waveforms. So I think I'd rather a slightly different sound by shape here little attack. Too much there. So now what I can do as well is I can adjust the tuning of each of these. So let's say I want the sine oscillator to be um, up an octave. Triangle oscillator um, to be up an octave. Let's put the sine one up two octaves. Square, maybe I'll put it below, like a sub. And the saw, I'll put it two octaves below. Loud there. So, you can already hear that now I can combine these. Let's have a look at what other settings we have. So, yes, we have a detune, so let's try. So plus or minus 50 cents. So a classic subtractive synth sound is probably going to be to detune these. So let's detune them all a bit. Let's go down 5 cents, 4 cents, 3 cents, 2 cents. Sounding good, let's go back to operator one and let's have a look at the... Okay, so I think we now have a sound which is feeling like a subtractive synth, but without any subtractive synthesis. So what turns it into a subtractive synth? And the answer is a filter to subtract harmonics. Remember, I'm not using this filter to subtract everything. If I wanted, I could have probably picked a different algorithm and I could have used this filter for actual filtering purposes, but that's not what I'm going to go for. So we have a filter available to us here. It has different modes. Um, I played with this a little bit. I think the 12 dB low pass should be fine. Let's just listen to it. So we have an envelope 
provided specifically for the filter. So what I'll do Now I have the filter envelope applying to this filter. This filter is a voice level filter. It's not one of the operators. And I can now shape this. So maybe like it to decay over a longer time, maybe six seconds, three seconds on the release. So we also have an LFO here for the filter. So let's navigate to that. This is the speed, the triangle wave, and then the filter, filter modulation, we can adjust how much that um, oscillator, the LFO applies. So let's, let's max it out just so we can listen to the rate that it's moving at. That's interesting. So we can have it key sync common or per voice. So per voice means that each voice has its own LFO and those LFOs get reset when I hit a key. So when I hit them in unison, they're basically the same. But when I arpeggiate them, you can hear that arpeggiation. So let's go back and turn the intensity down a lot. So I think this is basically done, as in we've done what I intended to do. We have got operator one, which has an envelope that is used to shape the sound, just like an amplifier envelope. We have EG2, which acts as an envelope for the filter. We have a filter, which is just a 12 dB low pass filter. We also have an LFO, LFO2 which is a triangle wave, which is operating differently per um, note. So it, it resets when we hit a key. So all the um, LFOs are running out of phase with one another, depending on when we hit the keys, which is nice. I have some amount of fade in, which means that the LFO doesn't come in full intensity. It comes in lower intensity and the intensity increases over the course of a couple of seconds. And that is also applied to the filter. So I think the last thing that I might want to do is turn on some effects. So there are some built-in effects I won't really dig in. Turn on some. Got up an octave. So relatively simplistic, but it's been interesting to explore a choice of algorithm. Having that ability to adjust the shape of that sound, to adjust the frequencies of the components, but also to have that single LFO acting as an amp LFO and a single LFO act, uh, a single envelope generator 
acting as an amp envelope and a single envelope generator acting as a filter envelope. So definitely a subtractive synth. Okay, so hopefully that's given us all a little bit more insight into algorithms, a little more insight into how these modes work, something about the filters and the modulation section, and something about how this operator mixer actually works. There's a lot more that you could explore here, but I think this is a good introductory level. So thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope it was useful to you. I hope you will join me for some more episodes as I learn to dig a little deeper into this synthesizer. But in any case, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.